Governor Kirk, Senator Gurney, Congressman Kramer, Judge Carswell, and all of our friends here in Tallahassee, the capital of Florida. I want you to know first what a very great privilege it is for me to speak for the first time in the capital of Florida. And as I speak here, I particularly want to express my appreciation to all of you who came from miles around to this airport rally. I saw the cars parked as Air Force One began to land. I realize how far some of you had to walk. I know some of you have been here standing over an hour. Thank you very much. thank the musical organizations that have been here. I understand we have the Leon High School Band and the Godley High School Band. At least we brought those two rival bands together. I'm also very happy to be in Seminole country. Uh, as, a, as some of you may have noted, I'm somewhat of a football fan, probably because I sat on the bench for four years and learned so much from the coach. But in any event... I do know the great rivalry here between Florida State and the University of Florida. And I do know, too, that this year the Seminoles, who have had some really fantastic years in the last two or three, have not been as good as perhaps some had expected, but they won last week, so watch out for the rest of the year. But whatever the situation with regard to that Seminole football team, I found something else, that the Seminole band is number one. Let's give them a hand. And also, before I respond to that very generous introduction for the governor of this state, I want to say something about a man for whom I have very great admiration. He's one of your fellow citizens in this county and in this city. I thought that Judge Carswell was a big man when President Eisenhower nominated him to the federal bench. I thought that Judge Carswell was a big man when I nominated him to be in the Supreme Court. But when Judge Carswell was rejected by the Senate by a very small vote, and when Judge Carswell lost the nomination to Bill Kramer, and then came back to be a real man and support the winner, he's a great man. Let's give him a hand for what he is. Because... We have to learn that in this life, we aren't going to win all the time, we aren't right all the time, and we aren't going to have our way all the time. And the real test of a man is not when he wins, but when he loses, and when he comes back and says, I'm for the team, and Judge Carswell's that kind of a man. And we thank him for it. Now, we have, as you know, a very difficult problem with regard to our school system. We believe, all of us, as law-abiding Americans, that we should carry out the law. And this administration is committed to carrying out that law, and we are doing it. But we're also committed to this proposition, that the law should be carried out not with the idea of penalizing one section of the country, but that the same standard that applies in Florida should apply in North Carolina or should apply in Michigan or New York or any other state. Let's just stop this hypocrisy that the problem in our schools is only in the South. It's all over the country. Now, men of go goodwill, women of goodwill, children of goodwill, teachers, students, we can solve this problem and we can meet it. I want to tell you what I believe. I have stated it in the North, in the East, in the West, in the South, and in a major statement that all of you have had the opportunity to read in March of this year. I think it's a sound proposition. I see these young people, these children here. I think of their future. I think of their future, whether they're white children or black children. I want them all to have that chance to fulfill their dreams. Just as all of us have had a chance, we think, to fulfill our dream. Just remember, we cannot fulfill the American dream unless each American has a chance to fulfill his own dream. That's what we believe in. That's why we want quality education quality education for every child in this country. And I happen to believe that if we're to have quality education, 
The best kind of education, particularly for our young children, is in the school that is closest to home rather than the school that's clear across the town. I believe in that because if you put children on a bus for an hour, they're going to be fighting. I don't care whether they're black or white, just you put them on that bus. And it's better, in my opinion, to recognize, of course, there must be some transportation. But that busing for the purpose, sole purpose, of achieving racial balance is not required by the law and, in my view, does not serve the interests of quality education. So we stand for the neighborhood school in Florida, in California, all over this country. Why? Because we want equality of opportunity for education and we want better education for all of our children and that's the way to get it. That is what we are for.